Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. My name is Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we are on episode number 12. Don't say. Don't say. I was just kidding, the dirty dozen, but whatever. Anyway, right. so uh, we're going to be talking about this week is some uh, NHL news, not necessarily shark related. Uh, we're going to be uh, revisiting the rookie camp. Uh, they had that going on in a couple different cities, so we'll mm-hmm. be touching on uh, some of the things that were happening there. We'll also be touching on uh, the penalty kill and the power play from last year. And uh, we'll also talk about uh, what it'll look like this year, I guess. Mm-hmm. And ads, new ads on the ice. Yes, a little bit of uh, controversy, yeah. if you will. So there you go. You ready to start the show? Let's do it. Okay, well, in the words of Celine Dion, near, far, wherever you are, please like and subscribe to The Fin Factor. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she said that. Sorry, anyway, uh, so actually, before we get to our NHL news, non-shark news, uh, there was one thing I wanted to bring up. I was actually looking through my dad's old uh, shed, trying to find Legos for my kids, and um, I stumbled across this beauty, so I wanted to bring this one up. Um, Yeah. Check that out. Actually, I'll just hold it up just like this. Um, Inaugural playoff uh, episode, or episode, um, playoff issue, rather. Um, Sharks Magazine. <laughs> Look at that shark. Look at that That's goalie. Cool. That's awesome. And I love that they've got the, the page in there that says, you know, for Sharks <laughs> fans only, how to do the chomp. Pretty sweet. And um, they had they used to do, I guess, uh, napkins that were, I don't know, I guess they changed them up or whatever. This was the napkins that they used for the inaugural year. I don't know why we wouldn't have put, like, a ticket stub there. They use, like, the same font and everything still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you catch this one down here, there's a, a little bug that crawled in there in my dad's uh, shed and died right on my napkin. So uh, we'll clean that up. But in any case, uh, we're not selling it for $35, by the way. Um, we're looking for a spot to put this in our uh, wall of awesome here. So if you are an interior designer and you'd like to come visit the set, <laughs> please let us know. This um, wall is, is changing all the time. All the I don't time. know if you've noticed, but the set pretty much changes every single show. More or less. It, be it a broken <clears throat> bobble or a new um, awesome signed by two famous uh, previous Sharks captains um, pitcher, then <laughs> yeah. anything and everything on the wall would be awesome. So yeah, things are constantly changing here and we hope to add that one as well. So I'll leave that there for now. Um, but we had talked about some stuff that was going on in the NHL, not necessarily shark related. I think mm. the first thing was Max Pacioretty being traded. He got traded. Yeah. He got traded to the Vegas Knights for Thomas Tartar. Tatar. 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 <laughs> some Tatar sauce. And yeah. uh, Nick Suzuki and a couple of draft picks. I think a yeah. second round pick mm-hmm. in the first round, which I was kind of surprised at. Um, the Vegas Knights got better. Mm-hmm. Pacioretty is a very good goal scorer. He essentially replaces James Neal, who left and went to Calgary. Right. Um, and they also brought in Statsy earlier this year, mm-hmm. who is definitely an upgrade at their center position. Um, I forget how they lost Perron, too. He went back yeah. to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. But um, Vegas looks stronger. Um, however, the piece going back, the more important piece going back, is Suzuki uh, going back to Montreal. He was a first round pick last year, uh, not this last draft, but the one before in mm-hmm. 2017, and uh, he's go- going to be a very good player. Um, he's a little undersized, that's kind of the only knock on him, but uh, that's pretty much Montreal's MO, is having really small guys, and they have like, they have nobody that can play center. They've been pushing mm-hmm. everybody from their wingers over to play center, so now they have a natural center, right. um, a kid who's going to be good. Uh, he's he went from a Vegas team where he's buried on the depth chart to probably being the number one, number two center in Montreal. So he's going to get a lot of ice time. It's good for him. Uh, hopefully it doesn't stunt his growth because mm-hmm. Montreal is going to be really bad this year. Right. Um, and that was a really bad joke on his height, by the way, stunting his growth. But in any case, <laughs> um, being a smaller player in the NHL nowadays isn't nearly as detrimental to your ability to be successful in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of players nowadays are a lot smaller, a lot faster, and that's kind of where the game's going, as we've said many times. Yeah, um, It's nice being big and strong and brawny and being able to smash people and whatnot, but if you don't have the hands, you can't score and you're not quick I say the, now you don't have the skates you're not going to be yeah, doing well yeah because the, the speed of the nhl is yeah. the direction that's going now absolutely everything is going in that direction and mm-hmm. if that's you you mentioned that they didn't get a first well right. they did <laughs> they got nick suzuki right yeah so um in that sense yeah they they got you know a pretty good payback a lot of people were saying actually that 
uh, Montreal maybe won that trade. Um, you know, Pacioretty is a, is a really good player, yeah. but um, Suzuki's very young, very talented. He's going to grow, and he's going to be one of those guys that's a stud in the league. It's going to take a couple years down the road to sure. realize, uh, you know, who won the trade. Absolutely. And Pacioretty had a down year, and mm-hmm. if he's on the downturn, and let's say he only scores 15, 20 goals mm-hmm. in the next two seasons, it's going to look pretty bad. It's going to look really bad. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and uh, I'm trying to think what the other thing with Pacioretty. Oh, he got the, the uh, Vander Kane money. They signed him. Yeah. They signed him to an extension. So the same, mm-hmm. same deal as Vander Kane, except a little bit less years. It's only four years. Right. Vander got seven, I believe, or was it eight? He got seven, I th- seven. thought. Seven, seven to seven, seven, I thought it was. Yeah. yeah, I think that's right. So he got four for seven, seven per year for four years. Right. Um, so he'll be in Vegas for the right. next four years. So he got Kane money, didn't get Kane years, but Kane's also younger than Pacioretty mm-hmm. is. A so. couple years younger, yeah. Yeah. Uh, moving on from that, Steve Eiserman in the news today. Big news. Uh, Steve Eiserman is probably top three GM in the mm-hmm. league. He's very well respected. He was well respected player. Right. Um, very well respected as a GM and uh, made some moves. Tampa Bay has been an amazing team the mm-hmm. last decade, since eight years since he's been there. Um, it, it's kind of an odd move. Uh, he had one year left on his contract, and I think they were trying to extend him, and he didn't want to. Mm-hmm. Um, so they switched roles with him and his, let's say, call it his assistant GM. Sure. Who is very sought after from other teams? The uh, understudy, if you. The will. understudy. He he had been interviewed, I think, by three other teams, mm-hmm. three or four other teams, and um, so I think Tampa didn't want to lose him, and Irisman kind of wasn't giving them the go ahead to stay. Right. Um, and there's been talks. Irisman still lives in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's some rumors going around today too that he told the players that he was going back home to Detroit. Now we don't know if that meant. He's going to be signing with Detroit as a GM. Or just going home. Or perhaps. just going home. We don't have to yeah. get too far into it, do we? So Maybe we do. <laughs> Ken Holland has been in Detroit forever. Yeah. And I think his contract is up in a year or two. I can't I can't remember. So there's going to be a good transition period. Maybe right. you'll see Irishman go in there for a year, learn everything, and then Holland leaves. And the other rumor was that Holland, I guess, is from Seattle area. Uh, what's coming to Seattle in the next three years. That's interesting, yeah. So they don't have a team name yet, but Seattle is most likely going to be getting an NHL team uh, in about three seasons, nice. two or three seasons. Yeah. Um, so we could see Holland move to Seattle and become the GM of yeah. the new team. Yeah, and, and I thought it was kind of weird at first hearing about uh, Eiserman on his way out of Tampa Bay just because Tampa Bay is such a great team. Why would, mm-hmm. it, why would you want to leave uh, such a great team when you've got a chance to win a cup? But... As you said, it there's some other more uh, like an emotional tie, if you will, or there's like a, a hometown tie, you know, with Detroit, and you know you've got the other GM on his way out, uh, for whatever reason that could that's actually a really good reason right there. Mm-hmm. Um, seems like everybody would just be you know playing you know, yep. shuffling around essentially. Yep. Um, you know, you just kind of hope that uh, the the understudy can step in and, and do well. I know he was sought after by many other player uh, other teams, but. Um, that doesn't necessarily translate to him being able to pick up and do a good job. I'm sure he will, but yeah. it, just like this Nick Suzuki trade, time will tell. Yes. Right? Um, it's harder with GMs. That takes years yeah. to really realize yeah. you know, how, how they did. Mm-hmm. But the understudy wasn't like there for a year or two. He's been there for a sure. long time. So sure. he's been very much involved with Tampa Bay. Yeah. So it, it, they're going to be in good hands. They're not going to all of a yeah. sudden just drop. Well, going from a team that's in really good hands and in really good standing <laughs> to a team that is uh, – in the dumps, <laughs> really, bad. as their owner had said, yeah. the Ottawa Senators. Yeah, they just released a video. Uh, I guess I think it was last <laughs> night of this recording. So right. uh, earlier this week, Monday. It's a bizarre yeah. video. It's the th- the third pairing defenseman is acting <laughs> as the host, and it's a show similar to this, yeah. where he's sitting and asking the owner questions, yeah. and the owner is just. Given some odd <laughs> answers, I go, what? So I love that 13 seconds into the video, uh, it's Borowicki, or yeah. I can't pronounce the name, but he says, um, so what's the plan? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. everyone, everyone, wants everyone to know. including me, wants to know yeah. what's the plan. <laughs> everyone wants to know, and I don't even think yeah. he knows the plan. Um, I think, well, he probably doesn't know the plan, he's just not going to tip his hand towards sure. it, but I think uh, Duchesne, Carlson, and oh. uh, Stone are going to be gone. He he was basically hinting that Fire he <laughs> he's basically hinting that they're going to go younger mm-hmm. and rebuild and it's kind of funny because those are the kind of three pieces that you would need in a rebuild a very good defenseman right. a very good center and a very good winger 
all right there. Yeah, cornerstones of any of any uh, franchise. So, mm-hmm. and it's not like those guys are super old or anything either. Mm-hmm. They're like you know prime aged. Mm-hmm. So, um, like I said, uh, Matt Duchesne, you look pretty good in teal, buddy. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather see Duchesne on the team than yeah. Carlson. I, I think, think it makes more sense. Yeah. Again, we going back to what we talked about before. I could see the only way of making sense with splitting Carlson up. is splitting up Vlasic yeah. and Braun. I would hate to see that happen because of the success that they've had. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Carlson and Burns can can be together and be successful defensively. And I don't see either of them playing on the third line yeah. pairing. So, so the other rumor that was yeah. going around today um, about Carlson is that Vegas and San Jose are the two teams that are really going in hot for Carlson. Really? So hopefully by the time this recording is aired, nothing happened and we're going to look like fools. But um, <laughs> so far, Carlson hasn't been moved to either team. Right. But uh, if Vegas lands Carlson... They are a much stronger team because that was yeah. kind of their knock. Their only knock last season was their defenseman was kind of weak. Mm. Weak in terms of moving the puck, not very strong defensively. Not that Carlson's a very strong defenseman. No. But their team would get instantly better, quicker. Oh, yeah. They got all that speed, and Carlson can can dish those passes out of the back. Yeah. So it's going to be a ruthless team. Yeah. So hopefully Vegas does not land Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> there you have a Carlson. So it'll need another one. Yeah. Well, I guess we do too. But we can. Uh, that'd be interesting, actually. If they pick up um, Eric Carlson and then we trade Melker Carlson <laughs> to Vegas. Carlson, Carlson, Carlson. <laughs> that'd be K three. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Is E K nine, and then they'd have K three. Right. So we have E K with Kane. Anyway. So there's that. <laughs> but so yeah, Ottawa not looking too hot right now. No. Um, they're they're probably going to be the last place team next yes. year. By a long shot, too. I think Buffalo got way better than they were last year, and they mm-hmm. were at the bottom. Um, Montreal will be down there, too. <laughs> Vancouver, maybe. Vancouver yeah. will probably improve from where they were last year, not a playoff team, but mm-hmm. uh, they'll be up there. And it's mostly Canadian teams. Yeah. They're just not yeah. doing so hot. When I, th- I think he had mentioned something about 10 rookies on the Ottawa Senators are going to be yes. on the roster. Yeah. It's a lot of rookies. That's more than half. Yeah, There's eighteen that you put out every night. So I mean, that's be... almost that's almost like having a rookie camp all season long. And speaking of rookie camp, <laughs> uh, the Sharks had the rookie camp yeah. uh, or have it ongoing. Um, they just played in a tournament in Vegas. Yes. So they were they had three games in Vegas, right? Where they played Colorado, Vegas, and I forgot Anaheim. I think was the other one. I don't remember if it was Anaheim. I know they play Colorado and Vegas. Um, I think we well we won the first two games, and I think we lost to Colorado. Yeah, lost to Colorado. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, played pretty well against Vegas, um, yeah. if I recall. I think it was like a four nothing win against Vegas. Yeah, and then I, uh, I was like four they to three beat. or something. I forget the scores. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, one was five to four. They oh, were they up go. three to one or yes. four to one. They were they had a big lead and then they kind of lost it and mm-hmm. then got it back. Nice. So they ended up winning five four mm-hmm. and then they lost to Colorado six to three today. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple empty netters at the end, but and uh, some big part to that win. Even though he didn't really get on the score sheet much, he had one assist, and I think he said eight, eight penalty minutes. Penalty minutes. Uh, Ryan Merkley. Yep, that's great for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a lot of people doubting, not doubting him, but questioning if yeah. he was really all that good. And Roy Summer, who was coaching uh, the team, uh, had nothing but good things to say to him. Um, he was definitely a standout player. Mm-hmm. He just turned eighteen yeah. in the last couple weeks, so he is probably the youngest guy there i would imagine uh and they said he looked like a 22 or 23 year old so don't get too excited uh he's not gonna be jumping to the nhl this year he's probably gonna need another two maybe three years before he hits the sharks roster but um by all accounts his skating was smooth as butter and (laughs) uh he made a lot of plays extended a lot of plays in the in the offensive zone right um he took a lot of stick infraction penalties but he also drew the exact same amount of penalties that he gave nice. out. So, um, and from what we read from Kurz's article... They were headhunting on him. Yeah, right? they were yeah. targeting him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one got called for a boarding call against him. Um, I forget what the other one was. So they, his M.O. has been losing his temper, and I'm sure that's what the other teams are trying to hone in on, is, right. is uh, go after him early and try and get him off of his game. Because he clearly is a target. Mm-hmm. He clearly was the best player on the ice um, so he is a very special player that yeah. uh, he's going to be really something that I think in maybe in five years down the road 
we're going to look back at that draft year and go, wow, the yeah. Sharks got him at, yeah. what, 19th position or 21st? Mm-hmm. I can't remember. 21st, I think it was. <coughs> They're going to, it's, that's a steal. Yeah. It's going to be a steal for mm-hmm. a first round pick. Yeah. And, and we look at um, Merkley and I think it was uh, Roy Summer who had kept relating him back to Burns mm-hmm. in the interview that he had. He was saying, yeah, he's a very smooth skater. He's very much, he's got a lot of these Burns type qualities. Actually, Merkley spent uh, some time with Burns and his family. So he got to kind of mm-hmm. see firsthand the type of, uh, he mentioned the, the app, or not the appetite, but the, yeah. uh, the diet, right? Putting all good things in, in your body and everything. And um, he says, you know, it was a really good experience for me off the ice to be able to hang out with Brent Burns and, and see how he takes care of himself and the training. And he goes, the guy just works all day, every day. He just trains. He just, works out before and yeah. after practice. Yeah. So, I mean, to get those types of habits instilled into a young defenseman, again, defense boy def- turned Good. defenseman, <laughs> um, who is just like a Brent Burns and is now basically, you know, learning from Brent Burns, not even on the ice, but off the ice. Um, all good things for for a guy like Ryan Merkley. So. I think that's key for a for a young kid. Oh yeah, coming. I mean, he is a long way from home, so mm-hmm. uh, someone could take him under his wing like that, like Brent Burns did, yeah. and show him like this is how you eat, this is how you prepare, this is how you train. It mm-hmm. doesn't stop once you get off the ice. Yeah. Like you, you need to put in good things in your body right. in order to output good things. Mm-hmm. So very good. And a couple other good things from the rookie camp. Uh, I'm going to butcher these names. Uh, Chemlevsky and Chekovic. 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 A lot of CHs in there. Yeah. I think there's like four CHs in those yeah. names. But, um, yeah, those guys, uh, they stepped up. They played real well. These are the two that came in uh, the end of last season into the Barracuda system. Mm-hmm. And if you recall, the Barracuda basically had to win out to be able to make the playoffs oh, and like they had to six have games or something yeah it was like six games yeah. straight and they had to have other teams lose strategically as well and that just happened to happen and um it was largely in part of those two guys in fact Roy Summer said without those two guys we don't make the playoffs period yeah. right um now they didn't do anything in the playoffs after that really but the fact is you know those guys were a humongous piece of an AHL squad uh, and when you're talking about big pieces to AHL squad, you're talking about guys that are about ready to make that jump. Mm-hmm. So these two guys, who I don't really want to say their names anymore because <laughs> it's too tongue tying for me, but um, they they stepped up and they played well in the tournament as well. Yeah, yeah. they. Uh, I think oh, I'm gonna butcher it. And they played Tim on the same Lefsky. line. Sasha. Yeah, Sasha. He uh, he's a big guy. <laughs> I think that's the one. He's, one of them is six foot four, mm-hmm. and, and they kind of compared him. Kind of compared him to Joe Thornton right. in the terms of um, he's not the fastest guy. He's a big guy, really holds the puck. Mm-hmm. Um, off, hold, uses his body, utilizes his body. I think they said the n- neither of the two were particularly fast. Yeah, but, um, but their hockey sense was off the charts, mm-hmm. which is, that's a way to get to the NHL. If you have the hockey smarts, you're going to get there if you have the work ethic to go along with it, which yeah. I'm sure these two guys do. Yeah, I'm sure too. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see these guys get a cup of coffee this right. year. Well, and NHL. the reason I, I just said, and I'm, I'm sure too uh, on that last comment, is these guys were sixth and seventh round picks, mm-hmm. and they they came in. This, not sixth round round picks, uh, sixth or seventh round picks a long time ago. This was just a year removed. Yep. You know, And these guys are coming in again. Stepping into the AHL level and being difference makers, they're playing together, and they're, they're they made a difference, right? Uh, without those two guys, as Roy Summer said, they don't make the playoffs. Yeah. And now in rookie camp, they're showing that you know they're the real deal. You know, um, I think one of them slipped from th- what was supposed to be projected as a third round pick yeah. into the sixth, and that's one other thing we should be talking about too is the Sharks' ability, the 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 drafting and scouting ability to say. You know, that guy looks like he should have gone a few rounds earlier. And they traded to get him. Yeah. They saw him. They thought he'd be gone in the third round, and they mm-hmm. liked him. And then by the time the sixth round came around, they were like, oh, wow, like he's still here. Yeah. And we want him. We're going to trade. So they'd made a trade with Nashville yeah. to get their pick and picked him in the late sixth round. Right. And Which then, is, is interesting. I would love to pick Doug Wilson's brain on that one because if you think he's a guy that goes in the third round, you make a third-round pick, and then he's there in the fourth round, why don't you pick him in the right. fourth round, right? Well, they could have had different target. Yeah, I mean, could have different could positions or something, right? Um, and then at this point, they go, "Wow, this guy's still here. We need to take him." Sure. Yeah, I mean, it could be you know at that at that point in the draft, you know, oh, at the the fourth round we needed to get a defenseman. In the fifth round we really wanted to get a goalie or something like that. And by sixth round you go, okay, this guy that shouldn't be here is still here for whatever reason. Let's pick him up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like that they, they traded up. It's funny when you talk about trading up to get a sixth round pick, yeah. right? Um, but kudos to the, the scouting and, and the drafting teams. You know, you identify that in a player and you identify that they should be going at, uh, you know, a, a higher round or in a higher pick level. Mm-hmm. And 
he's still there, yeah, snag him up. And I'm, look at him now. And for the player to see a team trade to get you, that yeah. tells you something that they really like you. Yeah. So you're going to go into their camp and you're going to bust your butt off because you're yeah. going to want to play hard. And you have a chip on your shoulder because you mm-hmm. think you should have gone earlier. Well, and and again, I can't remember which one it was, but he did say, you know, I, I want to show them that I, they're getting more than just a sixth round pick. They're getting more than just a sixth round player. Um, so yeah, he definitely had a chip on his shoulder. He had something mm-hmm. to prove, and uh, hopefully going forward, he he proves it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. So moving on to our next topic, we were talking about penalties last week. We really didn't get a chance to talk as much about the penalties as we, we really wanted to. And I think that might have been because Essen was talking about the, the <laughs> sham wow. <laughs> Shout out to you, Essen. Thanks, buddy. Um, that was a really fun episode. I really yeah, do appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, penalties. The one thing I didn't get to touch on, and if there's anything else you want to uh, touch on as well, I'm sure uh, you can jump in as well. But uh, Evander Kane, for, for me, was one topic that I, I didn't really get to say anything about and I really wanted to revisit. So with Kane... He's got, gosh, 17 games played, and he had 25 penalty minutes. Over the course of 82 games, that's close to like 125 penalty minutes uh, across the season. I realize he's probably not going to be getting that many penalty minutes uh, over the course of 82, and maybe he just had something he wanted to show, um, or he was just amped up and ready to go, and he just got some infractions there. But that really needs to get cut down a lot. And we're talking about Brent Burns getting 22 penalties on the team, uh, but that was over the course of 82. Yeah. So Burns, while he had the most infractions, still had a relatively small amount of penalties when you take a look at the number of penalties that other players from other teams are getting. Like I said, uh, what's his name? Um, Evgeny Malkin. He got 87 penalty minutes. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's that's a, a ton of minutes. Context. Yeah, sure, maybe, but Probably that's a that's handful. A, still, you're you're out of the game for that yeah. many minutes, right? So, um, with with Burns, I mean, his minutes were like 40 something, right? Yeah. And that was a, that was top in terms of the number of infractions on the team. Yes, uh, Dylan had more minutes, but he had the most infractions. Well, if you go over a course of 82 and you take that 17 games played number from from Kane. It, it goes into like 125 penalty minutes worth of penalties. That's just way too much. I don't think he'll get up to that high. No, I, I don't think, think so either. I think we'll see anywhere between 60 and 80 penalty minutes, mm-hmm. depending on the number of games that he plays. Because, um, again, he's never played a full season in right. the NHL. Um, I could see him being a, maybe a 60-point guy and 80, point, 80 penalty minutes Sure, would be ideal. So 30 goals, 30 assists, mm-hmm. be in the box for 80 minutes. Um, that's kind of how I see him. But I understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. A lot of take a lot less stick infractions. Mm-hmm. Um, I think part of it was that he was on a new team, yeah. a winning culture, right. a team that's going to make the playoffs, went to the playoffs. I think he was just really amped. amped. Yeah, and, and I th- I think having having gone through that initial stage right of being mm-hmm. all amped up and ready to go, and I got something to prove, and I just want to you know he's going he's almost going over the top, um, where he's making some of those mistakes, where yep. he's tripping people up, or whatever the case may be. Um, I think that. Uh, being able to play with, say, Joe Thornton, and not just on the ice, but also off the ice and in the locker room, being able to be with these guys and maybe just calm them down just a bit, you know, in terms of you don't have to go out there and try to do everything yourself and, and make some of these mistakes. Um, you know, we just want you to go out there, play with us, score goals, you know, hit and, and be hit and whatever else, but maybe try to get him him to calm down on the amount of penalties yeah. that he's taking. I would just hate to see him <laughs> like be in the box all the time yeah. when we could really use him out there on the ice scoring goals. I, I remember his first game as a Shark. Mm-hmm. I think, I don't remember if I was talking to you or someone else, I said, I bet he's going to get a Gordie Howe yeah, and he did. <laughs> no, he didn't. Oh, he didn't? He got in a fight in yeah. his second game. I gotcha. Okay. So his first game, he, he got a roughing penalty, I think, because it was like they were close to fighting. I'm like, yes, go on. <laughs> Come on, you're going to do it. You're gonna, I'm going to look like a genius. <laughs> Uh, but he did not in his first game. Yeah. But uh, his sec- I think it was the second game he got in a fight. He got one of them yeah. because he was so amped up yeah. and, and ready to prove himself to his teammates, basically. Which is good. It's great to be amped up and everything. It's just putting that energy uh, and focusing it in the right way, right? And I'm, I'm hoping that that's what the Sharks are able to do, um, both from that whole social media thing. I mean, I think that's over with anyway, but I think being around it the Sharks bother. and these guys yeah. and this winning culture, yeah. I think that'll just strengthen them even more as, like, as a person, you mm-hmm. know? And I think um, he'll be able to calm himself down a little bit um, and not take as many penalties um, in terms of the average, we should say. But that's really all I want to say about Kane. I don't know if there's anything yeah. else you want to jump in with uh, some other penalty topics or not. Uh, no, if I think we not, just go right into the power play. Power play sounds yeah. good. 
You wanted to talk about something different than I wanted to talk about. You want to talk about this year's coming power play. Upcoming power play. I wanted to talk about what was going on previous season. Sure. So Go should ahead. I start yeah. then? Okay, good. So what I wanted to say about the previous power play was uh, the difference between having Joe Thornton and not having Joe Thornton. <laughs> okay, and it is a humongous difference. With Joe Thornton, uh, and I went to NHL.com, look at the stats, so you can do the same thing that I did. I went from the beginning of the season till January 23rd. Maybe we can do a pop up on here. We can also do a pop up. Yeah. <laughs> Does it going to make that sound a boop up sound? Yeah, that'd be sweet. <laughs> anyway, um, so what we'll have is um, showing you the stats for the beginning of the season up until January 23rd, which is when Joe Thornton got injured. Mm-hmm. It was Winnipeg Jets game, I think mm-hmm. is what it was, right? And then the second set of stats would be from January 24th, the game the day after, till the end of the season, because Joe Thornton didn't play any time during the end of the season there. And what you'll find is that you've got 22.7, I think, percent uh, power play percentage, and they had just a ton of goals and, and a ton of opportunities and whatnot. Yeah, right? Thornton hits hitting his stride right, yes. right before Christmas time going through until he got hurt at the end of January. Right. He was and, almost a point per player. Yeah, and and the difference between him being on the power play and him not being on the power play was like almost 6%. It was like 16.9%, I believe mm-hmm. is what the number was. And, yes, yeah, some of that has to do with maybe Kevin LeBanc taking a while to gel with everybody else in that first power play unit. I'm sure we could have gone like – given like a month of forgiveness and then done stats from that, you know, a month later and then to the end of the season. They also could have split the lines evenly. Yeah. Or, or ice time for power play sure. evenly. But I don't think they did. I don't think they really did that. I think uh, the board kept still kind of front loaded the yeah. power play one. And I still would like to see Evander Kane on the first line power play, but I understand the he was idea new of at the out. time too. That too. Sure. I think he kind of already had uh, that unit gelling sure. by the time he got there. It was yeah. doing all right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I was going to talk about. Is how yeah. you set it up this year, right? So why don't you just go ahead and jump into that? Because so I, I mean, really, the only point I want to drive home was we're getting Joe Thornton back. Remember, he was on the roster, yes, yeah. but we did not have him for a gigantic portion of that season. You're talking about did the Sharks do anything to get better? If Jumbo's back, we're better. <laughs> we're Much better on better. the power play by six yeah. percent. Um, so that's my point. Anyway, looking forward now, forward, um, I think we see. Thornton centering, mm-hmm. uh, Couture, um, Pavelski, and Kane, mm-hmm. and then Burns. So I think they're going to oh, roll. Really loading that lineup. Four. Yeah. yeah uh, four forwards mm-hmm. and one defenseman, which they usually did last year. And uh, and from my memory, which is not the greatest, obviously, <laughs> I thought that they gave up a lot more shorthanded goals than they did. And I looked it up, and they only gave, out, they only gave up three shorthanded goals. Yeah. They gave up a lot of breakaways because Burns got out of position a lot and, and people were reading the passes, but they only gave up three shorthanded goals. That speaks how good uh, Martin, Martin Jones, Jones is. Yeah. I mean, really. So, I mean, three shorthanded goals put them in first, as in they gave up the least amount of shorthanded goals in the league. Nice. Um, and the last place was, uh, I forget who it was, but there were 13 goals, just to show you the, oh, the uh, disparity. Colorado. Was course. it Colorado? I think you said yeah. Colorado, yeah. So the difference... Between first and last yeah, yeah. was ten short angles. Which, which I remember we had talked a little bit before the show about this, and Tyson Berry was their yeah. quarterback, yeah. Uh, you know, back there playing defense on the on the power play. Mm-hmm. But you know, you're saying yeah, they're all pretty young and maybe more offensively focused, and that's you know they may make some some mistakes in there, and then all of a sudden you know comes back the other way, transitions, and then they're boom goal right. Yeah. So, I mean, the the being aggressive on the power play, they were 16th in the NHL. Mm-hmm. A lot of it had to do with Joe Thornton being out. I think they'll probably be closer around 10th mm-hmm. uh, with a full jumbo, maybe even a little bit higher, depending mm-hmm. on how the new kids do. Yeah. So I think the first top line would be those five guys. Mm-hmm. Second line, um, we would put... Hurdle, yeah, Meyer, who's left? Hurdle. The bank. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> it's it's not a terrible no. second power play. Who do you quarterback um, that, that second power Vlasic. play? Vlasic. You still put Vlasic? I cover? think Vlasic... Um, I think he's a... I, I still think he has some offensive talent that yeah. he has tapped into the last few seasons. He's mm-hmm. had offensively, he's had some of his best seasons the last few. Mm-hmm. Um, I think um, I don't think you split it evenly. So two minute power play. Let's give a minute ten to the top, right? And then fifty seconds to the second power play. Sure. So you're not going to give him that much ice yeah. time compared to Burns. In fact, if if it, depending on how the power play goes, maybe even just keep Burns out there. Yeah, and, 
and he plays the full two minutes. I think we saw them do that a couple times too, where uh, Burns was just out there the whole time. It depends on yeah. the situation. Depends on how many yeah. times they clear the puck and how much they're moving yeah. out of the zone. But I think for me, it's not so much concern with Vlasic not being offensive enough. Which okay, he's a defensive defenseman, fine. But um, I- I'm okay with him being on the power play. I'm just wondering if a guy like maybe a Joachim Ryan or maybe even a Dylan DeMello might be a better choice to mm-hmm. be on the power play unit. Also saving um, some of last six minutes for more of the, the defensive side, like the penalty kill, yeah. which, hey, we didn't get that many penalties. Great. But um, I would maybe save Vlasic for that. I don't think he he's out of place necessarily on the second power play, but I would just maybe try to manage his minutes in that fashion. I don't know. That's yeah. kind of how I would see it, but. I can yeah, see way. that. Yeah. yeah, I I don't think it's really gonna matter on the yeah. second power play, you yeah. can, but because it's gonna be such a short amount of time. I mean, why not give it to the young guys? Yoakum Ryan, that's yeah. fine. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, no, I think I think he and played. He's, he's another year under his belt. Yeah, so he's got more experience and we'll know absolutely. What to do. Well, one way or another, uh, again, looking back with uh, Joe uh, playing and Joe not playing, I think Joe with Joe on the ice, we were fifth in the league. On power plays in terms of percentage, which is ridiculous. Yeah. And without Joe, 26th in the league. So um, we got him back. We're really looking forward to that power play clicking again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if the way we're setting the lines up or anything like Aaron's talking about, I mean, we're going to be dirty for yeah. the first and second power play. Again, this team. Even if there's an injury to one of those guys, you can plug in another oh, one yeah. that's going to – they'll fit right in. Absolutely. So I think yeah. the power play is going to look really good this year. Yeah. Uh, you hopefully know what, it gets clicking and going early. Yeah. You yeah. know what won't look really good this year? Hmm. A whole bunch of ads on the ice. <laughs> so that's our next topic. Yes. <laughs> um, the nice ads segue. on the ice. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm yeah. getting better at this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you noticed uh, there was a picture. I think maybe we'll, we'll put the picture of yeah. the, um, the SAP Center up first. And you guys uh, take a look real quick. See mm-hmm. if you notice anything out of that may seem out of place. And then... Yeah, so uh, they, they were ahead. putting the ice together and painting the lines this this week, mm-hmm. I'll say this week, and uh, noticed a little something different in the uh, closer to the goals. That, by the trapezoid there. Yeah, yeah. The, in both trapezoids there are two... Well, on the sides ad, of the trapezoid. On the sides yeah. of the trapezoid. <laughs> there are new advertisements. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed it first before the Sharks did it. Uh, there was another team that had posted a picture of them, I think, last week. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, interesting. I bet they're going to do that. I bet every team in the NHL is going to do that yeah. because that's more money coming their way. Right. So, um, I do you like it? How about that? <laughs> um, I like white ice. I don't <laughs> like I don't like a whole lot of stuff going on in the ice. Now, having said that, um, I think this is a good time to put up the second picture. Yeah, where this is the European League, right? So, so I mean, we're in Germany or something. You said, I don't or? know if it's Germany or okay. Austria. I'll have to look it up. But uh, here's a picture of of what it could potentially look like. <laughs> this is this is the full, I'd say, i call it the full NASCAR treatment. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> it's just ads on ads on ads. Nice. And uh, if you look at those teams' jerseys as well, it looks mm-hmm. just like a NASCAR where yes. it's just covered in ads. There's the logo just like barely even Tiny, recognizable the because it's yeah. just surrounded with ads. Right. So I remember last season the NBA put ads on their jersey. I don't know if you noticed that. Mm-hmm. They have like a small, I don't know where it is, somewhere somewhere near the collar. Yeah, right near the top there. Yeah. It's a small patch. Sure. And I think they're even using the team color so it doesn't yeah. stand out. See, that doesn't bother me. Right. Yeah. I didn't have a big deal with sure. it. People last year were throwing a fit over it. Basketball over fans it. were probably throwing a fit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I go, I'm, so coming from a soccer fan where the soccer jersey has a bigger <laughs> logo for the ad yeah. than the team logo in the corner on the chest. I'm fine with it. I'm used to it. <laughs> and people were, you know, the NBA, they're like, I don't want to buy that jersey. It's got an yeah. ad on it. You know what? No. You're going to buy the jersey <laughs> because you want the latest and greatest. And sure. when your team wins the championship, like the Warriors did, right. you want the jersey right. that they were wearing that has the ad on it. Yeah. That's the whole purpose of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Plus, any pictures of any player now has yeah. an ad in it. Right. That's a bigger deal. Mm-hmm. So you're you're getting your name out there as a as a corporation who's mm-hmm. who's sponsoring it. So going back to hockey, I don't think it's going to snowball into what Austria or Germany I, does. I really hope not. It better not. I really hope not. I mean, because those the face off dots are really <laughs> that's really obnoxious. Yes, is, uh, that's the right word for it too. That is obnoxious. Yeah. I'm sorry, a gigantic yellow circle or whatever. That, uh, no, thank you. But that league doesn't right. get as much TV revenue. Well, so they have to get their revenue enough. some way. Right. So then 
okay, that begs the question then, and I don't want to delve too much into this because I got other points I want to raise, but does that beg the question, if they need the revenue because they're smaller, NHL is huge. Do Com- they need the revenue or are they just being greedy? They need the revenue. Okay. The TV deals are nothing compared to baseball, football, okay. and basketball. Fair enough. Here's what I will say about the ads and the ads. You asked me the question, do you like it? I don't like it. But I can live with it, and it's not so bad that you've got, you know, on SAP, Citrix, it says on there, right? Just in black mm-hmm. on the ice or in a blue on the ice. It's not like it's, you know, a background that's a rectangle that's red and then a word inside of it, right? It's not mm-hmm. totally obnoxious like that. So I'm okay with it as long as it's not so distracting like you would see in that European picture, right? Um, if they have it on in the corners there, again, as long as the corner isn't colored in, it almost feels like when, when you look at the European one, like it's like that uh, number coloring, right? Yeah. You have like, if you, there's yeah. a one, put a red in there. If there's a two, put yellow, <laughs> you know, it's, it's ridiculous. But on the NHL one, it's more or less, they just put like the name of the company or whatever it is. And just that name and that's it. If it was like Kit Kat and it was an orange rectangle that said Kit Kat, yeah, I got a problem with that, right? If it says Kit Kat, but it's just the orange is just the the letters mm-hmm. Kit Kat, right? Whatever, I don't really care, right? So I think it's just how obnoxious it looks that that turns me off. I don't really care so much about the advertising. Put that on there if that helps you get your revenue, great. But don't make it so much of an eyesore that people are just going, ugh, right? Yeah, that's just my whole point. I the mean, NASCAR teams, treatment, I love yeah. that. That's great. <laughs> teams just they had four in center ice. Yes, right. Now they have four more. They just yeah, on in the corners. They doubled yeah, exactly what they could do. Yeah, so that's I don't know if it's double the revenue. Uh, it's double the revenue you get from having the smaller sponsors on the ice. Right, right. So I, people are going to complain a lot. To me, I think it's not super obnoxious like the other league. Yeah. I think we'll get used to it halfway through the season. You know what's We're not more? Even notice it what's more obnoxious? But now we don't even notice anymore is the boards. Yes. The boards have full color advertisements I all the way around. I don't like the electronic ones because there's a huge glare on the ice. Okay. I, I don't think, though, I think those need to go. That's fair. Uh, you can get ones that change, like, you know, they, they rotate around or yeah. something. But I think the TV ones really glare on the ice and I think it's very distracting. Yeah, I could see that. I, that's the only one I don't really like. The fair rest enough. of the boards, though, like, sell whatever. So, wait, would you be okay? Let me put it this way. If, uh, BF Goodrich, okay? Mm-hmm. They're sponsoring, and they, they want all the face-off dots, and every single one of them looks like a monster truck tire now. You cool with that? The only things I don't want to change are the lines that you need for visual stuff. So okay. goal line, face-off circles, okay. blue line. So anywhere that's the wide center ice. lines, we talked about this earlier, the center line used to go through the middle, but Some now, still do. now there's yeah. no two-line pass. You don't need yeah. it as much. Yeah. Like icing you're going to know if you're behind mm-hmm. the line or not. So um, I just think I think the goal line, the trapezoids, I mean, I personally, I think the trapezoids need to go anyway. Yeah, okay. I think that rule is ridiculous. <laughs> I think that's punishing good goalies that know how to play the puck. I like so that. So I, I don't think, I think that needs to go anyway. Um, either way, they could go, the trapezoid yeah. could go, and they could still put the ads there. Do you think there's a reason they left the trapezoid open and they put the ads in the corners instead of the trapezoid? Because I think it's less distracting. Oh, so be- ads on the ads are distracting then. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, for a player, I <laughs> yeah. think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking more on a player perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I just... Even from a fan perspective, it's distracting. But as long again, as long as you're not having a gigantic rectangle that's colored orange right. on the ice, and then you have whatever it is, or like those face-off okay. circles that were Good just Lord. colored in completely. What were they thinking? They were thinking money. Yeah, that's true. They need the money. Fair enough. Money makes the world go around. Mm-hmm. Well, that brings us to our fresh catchphrase. And gosh, I really feel like I got kicked in the ads right there. So that's going to be <laughs> our, our fresh catchphrase. Has fresh catchphrase. There it is. <laughs> hashtag kicked in the ads <laughs> and yes I did come up with that one thank you thank you <laughs> anyway I don't know yeah, let us know what you it. think uh, are you angry about the ads do you even care did you even notice um, yeah do you think we'll go the way of Austria let's yeah. say it's Austria I'll say it's Austria you think it's Austria I think so okay I really hope not I like my white eyes <laughs> but whatever yeah anyway <laughs> okay great well hey I think that brings us to the end of episode number 12 yep man 
12. That's crazy. Hey, um, Dirty Dozen. Two more things that we do have to bring up. One, t-shirt. Yes. We hit 200 subs. We did. Way to go, guys. Good job. Give yourselves a round of Thank applause. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pick a winner, but we're not going to do it today. We're going to give one more week for people to go ahead and do the last second subs and uh, tagging three friends. Please, when you do the tagging the three friends, make sure that we're a part of that so that we can see <laughs> that you're tagging three friends of yours. Otherwise, just tag three friends anyway, I guess. How about but tag three friends plus the fin ah, factor. There you go. Yeah. So tag four friends, really, because we're your friend. How about uh, three or more friends? It doesn't have to be yeah, three. Yeah. You want 75 people to know about us? Please kick it to 75. Spam them. your friends. I don't know if let them know. Twitter would let you have that with the character limit. Though. Yeah. Who knows? Unless you got a lot you of. You could do multiple tweets. A bunch of friends are like at n and at z. So I don't know. Anyway. That's where you can fit it. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give that away, but we're going to give it away on episode number 13. Right? Lucky 13. Lucky number 13. Speaking of lucky number 13, uh, it is a very big episode. If you have not subscribed yet, you're going to want to subscribe. You're going to want to know when this episode's coming out. So please do that. I'm really not pulling your chain on this, trying to get subs here. <laughs> I'm dead serious. You're going to want to see this. So uh, please, yeah, um, subscribe, tag your three friends, get that shirt. Um, Anything else? Uh, if you're listening on a podcast version, oh, yes. uh, please give us a review uh, so that other Sharks fans can find us. That is true. Yeah. And more, thank you for listening. The more reviews, the more likes, the more everything else we get, the more we can reach out to other Sharks fans who would uh, appreciate this type of forum as much as you guys already do. Again, this is a conversation. We love talking with you guys. Mm -hmm. Be it in the comments, be it on the live streams before the show, or uh, Twitter or anywhere else. We're actually pretty responsive. I'm yeah. kind of surprised. Yeah, so, we are. We do a pretty good job. Yeah, not bad. Anyway, uh, episode number 12 in the books, and we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode, and if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.